Ladies and gentlemen, today we are here with the big cat. Super excited to have him here. So uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the Carolina Panthers today. Uh, if you're a Packers fan, you probably don't know a ton about the Panthers, but we're all pretty excited about this game and this week, and I'm real glad to have you here, man. Hey, man, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Real quick, I got to get it one time from you. Let me hear a pause up. <laughs> I love that your microphone goes out every time you do that. That's awesome. Yes. So let's let's start off with, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about you, uh, your channel, and kind of how you got started with this, because I'm kind of curious myself. Yeah, man, my name is El Grande Gato, also known as The Big Cat. Um, I'm the uh, the owner and the co-founder, or not the co-founder, the founder of Keep Pounding underscore TV on YouTube. Make sure you guys head over to subscribe for some good, entertaining content as well as very factual and detailed. I got started back in 99-ish, uh, 2000-ish. Um, I've been a Carolina Panther fan since then. Um, once I left uh, high school, I ended up getting hurt uh, playing college ball, semi-pro. Had a chance to make it to the Canadian Football League. That's when I uh, um, broke my ankle, so I gave up. And I like talking sports, man. I like, I'm very passionate about my team. So I said, let's get on the YouTube, let's get done, and um, here we are. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I I recently joined the fan to fan network and uh big cat is an all-star over there, man. He's <laughs> you get in the, the chat set, you're trying to talk about the Packers or whatever. You're trying to get all engaged and everything. And all you see in the chat section is where's big cat. It's like, Oh, forget you guys, man. I'm out of here. I don't, you don't want to see me anyways. All right. So, so real quick, a little bit more about uh, Carolina because out here in Wisconsin, it's all Packers, right? We got a couple other sports. Nobody cares. I don't know what it's like out there. Is it? Is it like? Is are are the Panthers real big out there? Or is it kind of like you know we care about SEC football and all this other stuff? Well, I'm actually in Georgia, man. Okay. I'm a diehard Carolina fan. I know I definitely uh, take my trip to Mecca, which is Charlotte, uh, every every year except this COVID year. I haven't been up there, but um, they're definitely a passionate fan base. They love their team. Um, it, it's just not a big market like a, like a Green Bay yeah. or or Dallas or. You know, it, it just doesn't have that kind of vibe, but it does have a homey feel, you know, especially with Southern Comfort and stuff. So it, it is a tight little niche community, but it's not nowhere big as the Niners, Packers, Pittsburgh kind of game. Yeah, so let's let's move in a little bit because Carolina is in a weird spot. You know, we kind of got comfortable with knowing what you guys were about as far as, you know, we know the coach, we know the quarterback, we know the team, right? It's, it's kind of the same thing for a long time. It's real different these days. Um, and I was I was pretty optimistic at the beginning of the season because I wasn't a big fan of the roster, right? You had a lot of holes all over the place, and I'm thinking, you guys are going to struggle. But you were winning some games early on, and I was kind of getting this ra Raiders feel, you know, where it's like you got a long way to go, but you're winning some games that I don't think you have any business winning. Real impressive. But last couple weeks, what, like seven-ish now, it's been a rough stretch. So where are you at with this right now? Are you are you feeling some optimism? Is it, is it getting kind of like uh, down in the dumps? recently well, it's starting to get to alcoholic about <laughs> <laughs> ready to take a fifth or something and just call it a while a year but all seriousness man this team has so much potential yeah. from the coaching staff to the young players i mean we're, we're not even tapping into our full potential man and these guys for whatever reason why well, i get it they're young they're young our coaching staff is probably the most inexperienced coaching staff to come into the lead and it's gonna take some time but I feel like this team right here that you guys going up against, don't let the record fool you. This team is a nine-win potential. You know what I mean? That's the kind of potential they yeah. had this year. But, again, when you're young, inexperienced as the coaching staff, you're making a lot of mistakes. And we lost seven games by less than one score, including going up against the defending champs. So you guys can sleep if you want to, but it's not going to be easy out of yeah, I've been saying that on a while for, I mean, same, Panthers and people on my podcast are probably tired of hearing me saying it. Panthers and Raiders are the two teams. And it's like, what is this, what are these guys going to do when they actually start building some talent, getting some more guys on this rock? It's going to be a scary team, but so you, you, do you like your coach right now? You feel like this is the guy that can take you there? Or are you... <laughs> listen, all right now I'm, I'm torn. I love him. Okay. Okay. Right. Listen, let me, let me state the record. I think he's a great guy, but, um, you know, from what he was sold to us, Panther Nation, he was sold to us as coming out of the college rank. He was this elite builder, okay? And obviously, if you know anything about building architects and, you know, schematics like that, it takes time for you to build stuff. So my thing is this. A lot of times this year, in critical moments, we've seen him not execute basic things, including timeout, 
including having a uh, play calling debacle with a starting quarterback, including going for fake punt six games in a row. I mean, it's minute stuff that's starting to worry me. You know, sometimes you're too smart for your own good. Yeah. I kind of get this vibe from him, but if he learned from his mistake in year one, hopefully he's a guy who can humble himself and learn from these mistakes. I think we're in good hand. I like him. He's, he's aggressive. He can kind of be a little ballsy, but uh, he, he he gives me the kind of the creeps just a little bit, man. Just a little bit. <laughs> so, fair enough. So, so some of the other things that I'm curious about as far as optimism, either – you know, th- this game coming up, but also in the future, you know, I, I got my uh, my YouTube and I do a lot of draft stuff. And I must admit, I don't remember some of the stuff I say. I must have said something not super great about Chin. Man, I got tore up so bad. See, look at your face already. I, hey, check out his missed tackles is all I'm saying. He's, he's 108 passer rating when he's targeted. He's got the most missed tackles of anybody in the NFL at safety. I'm just saying I didn't look super close. And I maybe said something, maybe not the nicest in the world, like, hey, maybe we should look at safety in the draft. Anyways, I got carved up. I looked a little closer. The guy's been killing it the second half of the year. One of the best safeties in football right now up there with Darnell Savage of the Packers. Same thing the last half of the year. Um, So, again, curious about a couple guys like him who's doing a good job that you're excited about in the future going forward. What do you mean, as far as on our team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, Brian Burns, man. Yep. I think this guy is just, he's on a tear right now. I mean, as far as getting pressure, I actually did an interview with his brother, man. And, and I asked him, I said, uh, one of my biggest concerns with him coming out of college, I didn't want, I didn't want Brian Burns. I felt like he was too little. Yeah. But all he seemed to do is to use his leverage. I've never seen a guy so tall, so lanky, be able to be so agile to bend up under these tackles and make plays. And he's making it work. And of course he needs to put more weight on, but He's using what he got, so he has a bright upside. Um, who else we got? You got DJ Moore, of course. You know what I mean? If he can put those um, those drops behind him, I think he can be an excellent you know, receiver. You know what I mean? A potentially elite receiver. Right now, he's just a good receiver. Uh, Taylor Moen, all right tackle, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we're going to better keep him. He's, he's already on the market, it looks like, for $16 million a year if he decides to test out the market. So we got some pieces. And Derek Brown. Even though uh, he hasn't necessarily had the eye popping numbers like Jeremy Chen, he has been effective in playing his role, man. And, and you got to think, we're supposed to have KK Short to go with him. He ended up tearing his pectoral muscles again. So, I mean, for, for what it is, those guys are looking pretty good. And I think their future is bright for Carolina. I promise you it's bright for Carolina. Yeah, there's some great pieces. Brian Burns is kind of one of those touchy issues for Packer fans, too, because a lot of us really like Brian Burns coming out. We wanted to go that route. Ended up with Rashawn Gary, which is which is cool. But I kind of had a feeling when I found out that his brother went to Carolina and all that, it seemed like a weird fit. But uh, I kind of had a feeling that's where he was going to go. And, yeah, he's been – it's one of those things – I no offense, I wanted him to do bad so badly just because I wanted him. So I wanted to just be wrong. Like, okay, good. They 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 made the right choice. And the first year it wasn't maybe quite as good, but this year, I mean, he's one of the better pass rushers in football, man. It's I mean, it's cool because I really liked him. I was a big fan of his in college and everything, so I'm glad he's doing well. But it stings a little bit when when the guy you wanted went somewhere else. We had the opportunity to get him and, and passed on him. But um so so all right, so you got some great pieces going forward. What are some of the things that you you definitely need? Like, all right. We got the draft. We got free agency coming up. We got to hit on these things if we're going to be a contender next year. Uh, how about a quarterback? Okay. That's <laughs> a thought. A <laughs> uh, listen, if you guys follow me, man, I- I'm the guy that was on Twitter talking about I got five on it. Teddy Bridge versus Jersey. Yep. Five. Obviously, I made a, a great mistake. Um, Teddy's good. He's a system quarterback. He's a game manager quarterback. Um I had to take five off of it when things that he was sold to me. He was sold to me in Panther Nation as accurate. He was sold to me as an, uh, intelligent. He was sold to me as being able to be efficient. And here of uh, late, and, and don't blame it on pressures. Don't blame it on him not get, getting side of it. He has had plenty of time. This guy has in the crutch, in the clutch moments, in the crutch moments, he has made the worst mistakes. The worst mistakes, yeah. and it's and it's it's worries me because this guy's known for being intelligent, right? And you guys know as Packers when you when you had him at the Vikings and being a system quarterback yeah. and game manager, being efficient, being act, all those things that he said or they sold that he was, he's not, especially late in games, and, and you can't you can't beat yourself. Let me let me, let me let me tell you this right here. Seven games this year, we had lost lost by one score or less. All right, 
seven games, even with the COVID season, even with the youngest defense in the league, even with coaching mistakes, even with no practice reps, even with timing issues, even with a suspect offensive line, we still had an opportunity with the ball in his hands late in seven games, and he hasn't been able to deliver. Now, mind you, we're coming off an a, a era when Cam Newton was a guy who would tear your ass up late right. in games. So we're got the polar opposite, and I think Panthers fans in year one of patience is already wearing thin. Yeah, no, I, I, I was, I was optimistic too. I, you know, I liked him. I was not just rooting for him because he's a good dude, but I saw the same thing. Like he's just, if nothing else, he's consistent. He's smart. He's safe. If you get a good team around him, he'll be fine. But it's, it's been pretty bad, and I'm sure he's not getting a lot of help. You know, it's, it's a team that's struggling. They're just learning. I'm not talking about your wide receivers or anything like that. I'm just saying that it's a team that's not winning a lot of football games. It's a new coach. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a little rough for him. I'm cutting them some slack. Don't look at me like that, big cat. Get out of here. I'm giving you a new quarterback. What? No, no, no. You're talking about we haven't had a lot of help. No. What do you, what do you mean? I mean, they, they kept them up, right? You got two receivers that finna go for 1,000 yards. I mean, they put you in position to score in the final drive to eat the tire and win. I mean, what do you want, a, a birthday cake in the candle? <laughs> what do you want? I'm just saying it's a first year. They're just trying to get stuff figured out. It's not an established team. They don't know what they're doing. You even said the coach is kind of he, – he doesn't know exactly what he's doing out there. It could have been a better situation is all I'm saying. But it's 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 you're right. He's not the guy. It's it's not going to work. He's a, he's a decent fill-in maybe, a decent backup uh, kind of guy. You can make a living doing that. But you guys got to go in a different direction. Um, how, how are you feeling about that next year? I don't know if you've looked at the draft at all. You, you feeling good about some of those guys and maybe you wanted to get some of that and, and – Maybe you got a guy that you're looking at? Yeah, man. See, see y'all making me go into my draft board. I got a, <laughs> I got a draft video coming up. All, All right, right. So I'll, I'll let you in. I think we're going to pop up around maybe the fifth, sixth pick, okay? But I think Justin Fields and I think Trevor Lawrence are off the board. Yep. So now you got to ask yourself, do you believe in Zach Wilson coming out of BYU? Do you believe in Trey Lance coming out of North Dakota State? And if you do, do you make that pick right there? I'm going to say the Panthers still believe in Teddy. Not not the fan base. Right. The organization right. still believes in Teddy. So what's going to happen is uh, a former opponent that you guys know, Chicago Bears, who are desperate in need of a quarterback, yep. I think those guys are going to trade up. They're going to give a first round, a second round, possibly a first round for the following year to us to jump up and take one of those guys. They have a hell of a defense to Bears do. They just need a quarterback to right. put together. I think they're going to give us the house. I think we trade back. We take an offensive lineman with one of those picks. Second round, we take another offensive lineman. We bolster that offensive lineup. And we give Teddy one more try at it. I think he's on a three-year contract. They're going to give him at least two years and see what he can do. Get some uh, double off of the lineman. And that's how I see it. I, I, I like Zach Wilson, but I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the Mountain West. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, what's my man? Trey Lance coming out of North Dakota State. Big potential. Right. I just don't know if that's a reach right there. I think get your off the line better, and if not, we'll get somebody in the, uh, the free agency. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes sense. Both of those guys are super high risk. You know, one of them just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, the other guy, I mean, you know, obviously you're, you're talking uh, – NDSU or whatever it's 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 always kind of scary especially with a guy that's got more rushing yards and passing yards you don't really know what you're getting out of a guy like that but I, I definitely think the uh, Panthers fans in general are going to flip their lid if oh, yeah. you got an opportunity to take one of those guys and it's like here it comes and you see that big trade come up on the screen people are going to flip out but you're probably right about that I, I did notice in the in the mocks you know see, i never know when guys are going to be happy or sad or, or whatever's going to happen but it doesn't matter what quarterback i give the panthers they're like i don't care just give me any of them and that, so you guys are easy to satisfy some fan bases right. are tough but i give you any quarterback and you're good to go um all right rapid fire questions you ready yeah i'm ready rogers or brady rogers rogers or breeze <laughs> rogers rogers or matt ryan Rogers. Of okay, I, I I figured you'd you'd go against the guys in your division, so I just yeah. want I just wanted you to say something nice about Rogers, so I got that out of the way. All right, let's talk about this game coming up. Um, is it? I, I know you mentioned that, and I think you're right about it. There, there's, and and I I'm trying to remind Packers fans of this because they they just look at the records and they're like, all right, this this should be a st if if we don't win forty to three then it's a failure. And I'm trying to get people to be like, listen, this is a professional football team that almost beat the Chiefs recently. They got some good players. They got a real good pass rusher. 
are you coming into this game saying, I really think we got them? Or is it kind of like, let's just get through this or somewhere in between? Well, man, I, listen, I'm coming into this game optimistic. You can look at it either way. I mean, there's every reason for you to say the Packers will stomp our guts out. Yeah. Then there's every reason to say that Packers could get caught sleeping. You know what I right. mean? In my position, man, I feel like this team plays really, really, really good, whether it's the first half or the second half. It's just we got to get this team to play full 60 minutes here. Yeah. Um, one thing I do like, man, I do like Chin. You guys got to understand, Chin has caused uh, uh, three fumbles, including two touchdowns in the last two games. Right. All right? So, <laughs> I think Chin is going to be Weapon X. Um, you also got Brian Burns, the guy who's a sack artist. Right. Only thing that kind of worries me about this game is it's cold up there. These guys ain't used to the Wisconsin cold. Carolina cold or Wisconsin cold is different. Right. But uh, <laughs> that'll slow you down. But right. I, I think these guys are going to get after it. I just don't know how long they can hold on. I think they're going to put up a fight, man. And they're going to put up a fight. I just don't know how long can they hold that fight. And who's to say? If we get in position to win the game again, can Teddy deliver? Teddy really scares me out of everybody, man. You know, Aaron Rodgers is who Aaron Rodgers is. Devonta Adam is who Devonta Adam is. Aaron Jones is. But if we play within ourselves, we're not worried about you guys. We're worried about ourselves. If we play within ourselves, again, we shut down Tyreek Hill. Yep. You know what I mean? We, we shut down Kelsey until he, until he got off in the second half. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, we shut him down until those guys got off in the second half. So anything's possible here, but you can look at it either way. Either way, man. Well, I, I, I can tell you one thing. They're going to have a chance to win the game. Teddy's going to have a shot because the Packers refuse to close out games. Their favorite thing to do is we're going to go up on a giant lead, give everybody all the confidence in the world, and then we're going to mess with Packer fans and make them lose their minds because we're just going to take our foot completely off the gas. We're going to play real soft on defense. The offense is going to sputter, and we're going to let this team come within seven. It's the most annoying thing in the world, but I promise you, at some point, you're going to have a chance, and, and they're going to give you hope. You're probably not going to win, but they're going to give you hope <laughs> that, that a win is coming. Um, and you got to struggle against the run, too, man. And we got a guy by the name of Mike Davis, too, done a phenomenal job replacing Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. He's, a, he's a beast, man. I think he's going to pop somebody's helmet off. He's, he's a good dude, man. All yeah. running. So, speaking of that, I, I asked for questions for this show. I got about 10 responses, and nine of them were about Christian McCaffrey. So, <laughs> but they're all different variants of that. But we got a guy by the name of Aaron Jones. We love that guy. Good running back. Great guy. But he's he's up for a contract. And all the conventional wisdom says you don't pay a running back. And it's kind of it's kind of iffy. You know, there, there is some some data out there that says you shouldn't do that. But it's scary giving up on such a weapon like that. What are your thoughts having one of the few exceptions to that rule as far as uh, paying a running back when he's as helpful as, as Christian McCaffrey is? Well, see, the difference between Christian McCaffrey and Jones is Christian owns a record that only two other running backs own for a thousand thousand season. Right. Um. What happened to him this year was a freak, a freak nature. 2020 has been a freak of nature, man. Right. I mean, you know, he's the, he's a guy who literally has played his whole career with no major injury, and now you get knees, ankles, shoulders, including one doing, working out in his garage during the off season or whatever. I mean, yeah. during the um, bye week, by the bye week. So, um, a lot of fans are regretting paying him that hundred million dollar contract. I'm a guy, I guess, I'm patient, man. Maybe I got a, I, I don't know what's going on. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I got a lot more patience. I think it was a good move. Um, the reason why I say it's a good move is because you're getting two weapons. You're getting a running back and you're getting a receiver. This guy is a match man nightmare when it comes to li lining up in the slot, making your linebackers cover him, trying to buy him. I mean, you can put him all over the field. So you're getting two for the price of one, man. So as far as paying a running back, I wouldn't pay a guy like a, 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 a my man from – uh. The Dallas. I want to play Zeke Elliott because yeah. he's, he's gonna he's gonna fade here. He's gonna fade out here in a minute. He just yep. appeared bruiser. But these guys that are like Weapon X's, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, Christian McCaffrey, guys that can do it more than just with running the ball, you gotta pay him. Yeah. All right, man. Final thing. Let me get a quick score prediction from you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say 31-24 Green Bay. 
That was exactly my score prediction. I put it in our newsletter. So I, I agree with you. We're on the same page. Hey, man, I really, really appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad you came on. Thanks for teaching us a little bit about the Carolina Panthers. It's going to be a great game tomorrow, and I look forward to working with you some more over at Fan to Fan Network. Guys, make sure you please check that out. The guys over there are working super hard, and uh, we're having a great time doing it. All right, man, keep pounding, man. Paul's up. <laughs>